Hello and welcome to this week's episode of the Parents and Tools podcast. My name is Jordan. And my name is Jason. This is the podcast where two dads, myself and Jordan, give you all the advice that is terrible advice that you never asked for. <laughs> well, Jace, it's, uh, it's Bank Holiday Monday today. It is indeed, if you can't tell already by the bags underneath my eyes. <laughs> Easter weekend, how's it been? It's been really good, really good, but also very tiring. Easter weekend for a lot of people, four day weekend. It's a, one of the busiest weekends in my calendar by far. Mm. Working Friday and Sunday and having to prepare two services for the church that I lead um, over the weekend. Very busy, but... Oh, it, was, it was good. Lots of chocolate consumed as well. So give us a breakdown. What did you do Friday? What did you do Saturday? What did you do Sunday? What did you do today? Four day weekend. Oh, here we go. Let's start early morning on Friday. So Walk us through. My, my church isn't a very tradi- traditional church. However, uh, we had a traditional Good Friday service. What is a traditional Good Friday service? It's a very good question because I didn't know. <laughs> And so I asked somebody else to lead it, and uh, it was very good. It was very reflective. They walked through the story of Jesus on his way to the cross, and uh, I think in the Church of England and in the Catholic Church, they have like 14 stages that they talk about. Um, we thought that was too many, so we did seven. <laughs> Half it. Half it. But it was, it was very reflective, and lots of people did little like Bible readings. It's, it's what I imagine, if you've never been to church before, that's what it would be feel like that's what you think that's what you think like, yeah. yeah one person gets up does a reading lots sits of different but yeah. it was it was very good it was very different to what i was used to but i had a lovely time and but it was tried my best to not be <laughs> sounds really dodgy tried to, to be mournful everyone thinks more good friday is like a little bit sorrowful i don't think it is but um people take it very seriously it's called good friday exactly my point morning isn't good exactly <laughs> That's Friday, and then the afternoon, off. But because Smashing. it takes a lot of energy for me preparing church services, yep. um, but also like being around people, <laughs> lots of people, takes a lot of energy from me. I'm a natural introvert, don't like to talk to people. Um, and so I love church, but also it takes a lot out of me. Yep. Um, and so I try to veg as much as possible. Got to be on. Yeah. yeah. Um, but then, actually, I went to see my parents, who live two hours away. Stayed at their house, and uh, my daughter usually goes to bed at 7 p.m., half six. We got her into bed a little bit late, thought, it's a good Friday, let's have a, a good Friday treat. Yeah, why not? 7.30, she's in her bedroom. By 10 p.m., me and my wife were still trying to wrestle her to sleep. <laughs> Dear me. <laughs> Two and a half hours of really? relentless, like, tantrum. She was so overtired and full of, like, sugar that she was just beside herself. What time did you arrive at your mum and dad's? There's no excuse, like three o'clock. Oh, wow. Yeah. So it was just as much time getting her to bed as you were there. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. And we'd like plan the evening and spend time with my parents. Of course, yeah. And it was just taken up with like my daughter and we couldn't even like tag team it or one of us just take the brunt because every time one of us would leave, she would like freak out. Yeah. Daddy, where are you going? <clears throat> no, usually she's not bothered about me. <laughs> um, but then it was like we both had, and. 10 p.m. rolled around. Uh, she fell asleep finally on our bed. Um, so I snuck downstairs and got the curry that we'd ordered. Oh, <laughs> Cold. Yep. Cold curry. And uh, my wife sat and ate it in the dark. Oh, bless her. Good Friday. Good. <laughs> That's mournful. <laughs> add more add more on the, the heat of the curry. <laughs> and Saturday, we had a kids party. Nice. Yeah, it was it was lovely. What lovely. we're talking, soft play? It was a hired soft or soft play as in in someone's house they wow. had little bits of soft play so it was a second birthday party so we're not talking like massive slides coming out their windows yeah just little bits of soft play in in the rooms it was, it was pleasant it was nice yeah. good just to hang out with other parents who are equally exhausted but also equally proud of S- their kids slide coming out the window sounds amazing uh, that's, what age does that happen that's what that's, I, want. I want that for my 30th yeah <laughs> <laughs> But I always find it funny, like, at, at children's parties, it's you, you're around people that are in the same boat as you, like, especially yeah. if your kid's the same age. It's so many similarities. 
um, and like all kids are like at different stages and loads of stuff going on. So you've always got something to chat about. Yeah. Um, but it's just nice because there's always a lull where you're all just sat there, and if there's a bit of quiet, everyone just embraces it, and it's like let's just not disturb the kids. Yeah. And just sleep with our eyes open for a moment. Or if there's an awkward silence, you just get up and watch the kids for a little bit. Yeah. Just follow them around the soft play. Yeah. And come back. Yeah. But that was that was lovely. And then back home Saturday night, Sunday morning, Easter Sunday. Um, again, that's a big Sunday for us in church. Yep, big old day. Bought lots of Easter eggs to give away. So nice. we actually, as a church, we bought loads of Easter eggs to give out to like some some of the community in Sheffield. Yep, uh, which was lovely. That is nice. Um, but then I also just like chocolate, so yeah, we just bought loads of chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> just ate loads. Yeah, <laughs> that was it. And then Sunday, just veg for the rest of the day. That's also not true. That's <laughs> how tired I am. I've forgotten what I did. Went back to my in-law's house for Easter dinner, lunch. But did you veg at their house? Yeah. Yeah. Proper veg. And because the in-laws, they can look after the kids. Steamed veg. <laughs> mm. Do you do your veg in a steamer? I don't. I'd recommend. I could do with one. I'd 100% recommend. I don't know why, but I just fancy a bit of asparagus, but pan fried. Nothing oh. to do with a steamer, but... As soon as you said veg, all I could think was, I want some asparagus. Really? Yeah. Makes my wee smell funny. <laughs> and the colour. <laughs> anyway, that is what day are we on now? Sunday? Yep. On to Monday. So Monday morning, bank holiday. Today? We uh, had booked a soft play. Lovely. An actual soft play. And for those of us that follow us on, for those of us, those of you that follow us on Instagram, I post a little video of the ginormous slide the super slide yeah it was huge it's like it looked amazing so to put it into context there were six adults that took two children to soft play yep the grandparents obviously me and my wife and my brother and sister-in-law two kids and three of the adults got injured going down that slide (laughs) (laughs) i'm at the point now where if i'm going to a soft play i wear not jeans oh yeah you can't go in jeans you've got to account for the slide (laughs) You've got to wear well lubricated, well not lubricated, <laughs> but slippy trousers. But also jeans, jeans just aren't breathable. No, no, yeah, they can't be wearing it. Yeah, can't after. be wearing jeans. <laughs> You've got to account for the soft play activities. Yeah, but what I was really proud of. This is the first time where we took my daughter soft play, where she was really comfortable to going off by herself without like literally by herself, no other friends that she's got. The dream. She was she was loving life. And she was going down the smaller slide at first, and then I, I went on with her because it was fun, and I wanted to go on it. Um, and then she was like, "Oh, can we go on the big slide?" I was like, "Oh, it's quite big though. Aren't you? Aren't you a bit frightened?" And she went, "I'll conquer it." Oh, boom! And she did. Yeah, back yourself. Literally, and then she just went straight down without me, and so I'm sat at the top of this slide, actually a little bit scared. Nice. <laughs> but, and that was it. We went to a soft play recently, where it was one of those slides that's a, like a vertical drop. Oh, and yes. then it kind of catches you. Yeah. I was a little bit, I kind of like lowered myself in, like I was getting into a swimming pool, lowered myself down. And then I got Luca and I was holding him over. He's like, I don't want to. I'm like, hey, be fine. And he's just like dangling <laughs> by his arms. <laughs> Have you seen the ones at like Orlando? Um, Universal, I think. It's like they've got this like fake volcano that they've built. That's and cool. And it literally takes you about 20 minutes to climb the stairs to go on the water slide. Amazing. You go in this tube. Oh, and the floor. And the floor just comes yeah. out. So really good, cool. but I know it's for kids, but I can't imagine kids going on that. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely petrified. <laughs> that was my four day weekend wrapping up with a little podcast recording. Here we are. What about you? What was your four days of ah, joy? So, by contrast, and it was a lot of joy. A lot of jo- I love Easter. I prefer Easter to Christmas. Oh, yeah, I, I agree. Not I even so. from like a religious standpoint, but just there's less pressure on it. Less buy preparation. Yeah, buy an egg, buy a book. But still. I've got two weeks off now as well, so. Oh, lovely. So yeah, I'm really enjoying it. Bank holiday weekend, good vibes. We had some good weather. Not today. No, not today, but yeah, was yesterday, the day before. We've had some nice weather. Nice sun. Yeah. So yeah, I love Easter. So Friday, by contrast to your traditional service, we have a, a breakfast at our church. Oh, lovely. Like a few croissants, a pan of chocolates, toast. I've coffee. not had dinner, so I'm I'm like <laughs> salivating. <laughs> so yeah, that was uh, that was really nice, and then. Um, you know, a bit of worship, which if you don't, if you're not a church goer, worship is basically just the songs that you sing at church, the happy clappy bit, or the hymns, depending on where you where you go. <laughs> uh, I'll come back to that though. I'm gonna pick something up from Sunday, um, and then after that, we went for a walk. 
uh, with our in-laws, my in-laws. So that was nice. Got some ice cream. Lovely. Lovely. Yeah, really nice. That nice was a good walk. Friday. It was a great Friday. Uh, Saturday. What did we do Saturday? Went for a walk with lots of kids. All our friends were kids. Carnage. Oh, that did an amazing. Easter egg hunt. <laughs> my wife came up to me. She said, hide these eggs in a maze. In these, these grounds of this place we went to. So I just stood there throwing them. <laughs> she said, Remember where you put them? Just lobbing them. Just launching the eggs. Um, so yeah, that was fun. Some of them are still there looking for them. Yeah, yeah. there was one that's like, I forgot where I'd put it. And they were looking for it for ages and I just forgot. Um, so yeah, that was that was really fun. I can't remember, I want to say six kids, 12 adults maybe. Good ratio. Yeah, something along those lines. We had some friends uh, that don't have kids. And we said, what time should we meet? It's in the, in the WhatsApp. Yeah. Half nine. And they said, bit of an early start. <laughs> behave I think I actually responded to that <laughs> behave yourself <laughs> middle of the day um, so yeah that was that was really fun Sunday uh, morning at church I love Sunday morning at church East Sunday everyone's in a really good mood yeah just big old party time for Christians it's great it's, it's like the main event yeah of the Christian calendar yeah, it's so the main bit we had baptisms and uh, I was leading worship nice. so the songs bit how do I describe this? So in church, you have a band. In our church, we have quite a lively band, modern instruments. It's not just someone on an organ. And <laughs> When uh, you said modern instruments, I thought, you know, that you float your hand above. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Theremin. <laughs> Is that what it's called? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, DJ Dex. Or <laughs> that makes you sound really old, doesn't it? DJ Dex. Um, and I was leading the band. So in essence, you're a front man, yeah. which sounds cooler than it is. Um, <laughs> And uh, started sing. I went off piste. Started singing a song that wasn't planned in. Nice. It's far too high for me. <laughs> <laughs> I was screaming. I was so my voice is in bits today because I was just making a fool of myself. You were screeching, mate. I was reaching, and I, do you know what? I didn't get there. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, that didn't go. Didn't go as planned. That's brilliant. So yeah, that was uh, that was really fun. And then what do we do? We had all we had all our family around. Lovely. Mum and dad, in laws, sister in law, brother in law, grandparents, I think it was twelve of us at ours for dinner. Nice. Um so yeah, it was really nice. And then today we had uh, some friends over that uh they live up north, they live Liverpool way. But they're it's like our north. besties. So it was nice to see them. So yeah, it was it was brilliant. And then after this, gonna have a Chinese with some friends. So lots of friends, lots of carnage, lots of kiddos. Nice and just it's a lovely time, really. Uh, just a lovely time. Yeah, really nice weekend. Yeah, can't complain. Oh, that's lovely. Apart and from the... Uh, oh, and I went out for a curry last night. Not repeated on you? No, not at all. That's a, a good Saturday. Sunday. Ended up doing a, a pub quiz that we didn't plan to go to. <laughs> wow. That was amazing. You had a bit eventful. Wait, I haven't stopped. <laughs> it's like I'm, I'm tired in the sense of I've just not stopped, but like it's all been really fun amazing stuff it's like a mini summer holiday yeah it's been it's been brilliant oh amazing so yeah it's overall just a a really nice smashing weekend beautiful easter a little bit interested george you said lots of kids lots of carnage yep what kind of carnage <laughs> oh man so the one that comes to mind doesn't involve a child that we were with so when we went out <laughs> interested when we went out for our walk on saturday with everyone um do you know those puddle suits that kids wear yeah i've always wanted to wear that as an adult it's great it's great but you'd, you'd look mental <laughs> wearing one of them yeah maybe there was this uh this kid that were kind of do you know when you walk in around the same loop as someone at kind of the same pace and you end up yeah seeing, a, seeing them a lot yeah this kid was loving the puddles and he was like waist deep like mud everywhere wow and then there was this huge puddle which had been coned off like they knew it was a big old puddle so we walked past it and um, looked back to see where some people are. And I see this kid, armpits, <laughs> like, armpit height in the puddle. And he's just there with his arms out, stuck. And his dad, who doesn't have a puddle suit on and doesn't have wellies on, is kind of wading out oh, no. into this small pond <laughs> of a muddy puddle <laughs> to get the little boy. Honestly. It was hilarious. Like, we were all laughing. He loved it. And his parents were obviously happy. 
Like, you know, he was having a great time. Oh. <laughs> Glad it was them, not me. That's got to happen on the right day, though, as well. Yeah. Imagine if you woke up grouchy yeah. and that happens. It was a sunny day as well, so oh. it had dried off quickly enough. That's good fun. Oh, was amazing. I'm glad it was their child, not mine. But yeah, just <laughs> up to up to the armpits in water. That's one of those things where I hope that if I was in the same situation, I hope I'd be the the fun dad. Yeah. Not the, oh, got to take you home now because you're covered yeah. in mud. Yeah. But yeah, that was, uh, that was funny. Oh, very good. Very good fun. Oh, John, we've had a message from... International, International Listeners! listeners. That's, we got it. Nailed it. Who's it from? So this message is from Brooke, and Brooke lives in Texas. Texas? Is that is that a good accent? <laughs> That's a good one. Try it again. <laughs> Give me your best. Say, I'm Jason. I'm from Texas. <laughs> no, I feel like I've got to have a, a Texan phrase. A Texan phrase? Well, I don't know what any Texan phrases are. Howdy, do I? Howdy, partner. Texas? <laughs> it's the same thing. Give me your best Texas phrase. Texas. <laughs> Man, we love Texas. <laughs> It's like Alabama or something. I don't know. Not a clue. <laughs> uh, so this is from Brooke, and it says, Hey, guys, my name is Brooke, and I live in Texas. As established. <laughs> Texas. <laughs> my husband and I are expecting our first child in June. Oh, congratulations. Oh, congratulations. And I've really enjoyed listening to your podcast. I binged most of it within two weeks, and now I've finally caught up and love hearing parents, especially dads, being real about what parenthood is really like. I'm going to interrupt myself there. Have you dreamt about us yet, Brooke? <laughs> That's such a weird question. Do you know when you binge a series and you are like, you get through it into, you dream about it. Have you done that? Have you dreamt about the characters? I get what you're talking about. I, I had that with, what was that game on iPhone? Like Candy Crush? You dreamt about Candy Crush? Yeah, I was playing it so much that when I closed my eyes, all I saw was Candy Crush. No way. Yeah. I had it with Jack Bauer when I watched 24. <laughs> well, all your dreams, 24 hours long. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They were before I had kids. <laughs> yeah, I, I dreamt that I was Jack Bauer quite a bit. Um, I've had Warzone dreams. I've had war, Warzone dreams. Yeah. Yeah, stuck in our Mazra. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Just dropping in. <laughs> so yeah, let us know, Brooke. <laughs> Have you dreamt about our voices? <laughs> oh, I'll carry on before I talk myself into some trouble. Anyways, I was listening to your last episode with Dan. So this was a few weeks ago now that we got this message. And he was talking about the routine you go through when your baby is crying and how exhausting it can be. In some of my parenting classes I've taken, they discussed the Dunstan language of babies where you can understand what a baby's need is from the type of cry. Have you heard of this before? Oh, I have. Have you? I have. Oh, I'll, I'll carry on. We'll come back to it. I haven't had my baby yet or been around babies enough to know if it works, but I thought it might be something that might help Dan, I suppose, other new parents as well. Oh, and one more thing. So we're going to use this as an opening question today. Do you have any recommendations for other parents in podcasts? No. <laughs> <laughs> Just this one. Uh, I hope all is well with you guys. Thank you for the continuous positivity along with the true reality yeah. of parenting. That's from Brooke in Texas. Oh, amazing. Thank you, Brooke, Thank from you, Brooke. Texas. Texas. Uh, <laughs> answer part one of the question first. What was it? The dun... Dunstan language? Dunstan so this language. This is one of those things that early on in our it. journey of uh, being parents, there was a little screenshot of this that lived in my phone. Really? Yeah, there was a collection of things that I accumulated as a parent, as a new parent. Yeah. Alongside the chart of colourful poos, <laughs> this was one of them. The types of baby cries. I've never heard of this. And, and it literally would have, like, it would spell out the type of cry. Like, could, uh, to a... Sorry, I didn't quite hear those. Can you go again? <laughs> <laughs> and essentially, what they were claiming is, is that, exactly what Brooke has said, each type of cry suggests a different yeah, need I'm, that the baby has. I'm seeing it. However, whilst I think there is definitely some merit to understanding your child and what they want, because there were certainly times when I could tell that that, that cry related to this whatever that thing was. Can't remember now. You forget, don't you? You do. But it wasn't what the chart said. Right. Okay. So I don't think it's like a generic universal thing, but there definitely is a merit to understanding your child. And I think generally, like the more you spend time with them, the more you figure out. However, there were times, and I've talked about this before. I remember even texting you like, 
Noah's not start crying. Like, what did you do? And he said, Infocom. Yeah, Infocom. <laughs> It's the answer to everything. Yeah. <laughs> and so sometimes you just don't know. No. Um, and so you try everything. Um, but we did go down that rabbit hole. And to an extent, it did it did help us at least try and look out for the differences in cries and, like, recognise the patterns. So I've I've got them here. Oh, go on. So we've got... Ne. Yes. Remember that one? What do you think that is? Poo. No, it's hungry. Ah. We've got... Eh. Poo. Burp. No way. We've got yeah. Tired. Lower gas. Lower gas. Don't know what that means. <laughs> We've got ha. I don't know. Discomfort. They all sound pretty discomfort to me. Probably caused by burp or lower gas. I don't know. Lower gas again. <laughs> I don't know, but why else would a baby be uncomfortable? I don't know. <laughs> Doesn't like the chair. Pooey nappy. True. That's more, and then more the last one. Ow. That one's got to be poo. Tired. So poo's not any of them. Poo's not any of them? No. Ah, see, that's where I disagree straight away. We had a lot of crying <laughs> poos. But yeah, I, I completely agree that you get to know what the cry means and you get to know what different... Like, if you can't calm them with a burp, then obviously yeah. it's something else and you go through the things. Hmm. Surely it can't be universal. I reckon there is definitely some science here. And I am not a scientist by any <laughs> measure. <laughs> but that if you need to burp... It affects your diaphragm in such a way that's probably universal. And yeah. if you can only do one sort of phrasing... Uh, that makes sense. Yeah, I could see how that might be the case, but everyone's different. But then if there was a language that everybody could <clears throat> learn to know what babies' cries meant... Oh, have you seen that film, Look Who's Talking? No. It's basically a bunch of babies that can actually talk and communicate with each other. Nice. And like the baby language is a generic baby language. That just reminded me of that for some reason. <laughs> so, yeah. There we go. And the other part of Brooke's question, and I know uh, I skirted over it with a little no. Uh, do you have any other recommendations of parenting podcasts? Mm. I know you like a podcast. I love a podcast. I have many a podcast that I listen to. Uh, parenting ones are lower on the list now because I should try not to steal content. Try not to plagiarise. Yeah. I'm exactly the same. Uh, one that I genuinely one that was so helpful for me in like the whole parenting journey and like sometimes it's pretty dark and what this podcast helped me through a lot of it it was rob beckett and josh whittacombe's parenting hell yeah it's literally uh, like the most popular one yeah, in the world it's in if the you've world. not come across it already it is hilarious it's very good um me and my wife are actually going to see their live show mm. next week really yeah. this week friday oh nice. yeah there we go in manchester yeah. manchester arena how mad oh, is that? That's big, isn't it? Yeah, huge. Good for them. But it's it's a, it's a so funny. It's such a real and hilarious podcast. And it really helped me get through some of the darkest times through parenting. Yeah. The only thing is it is quite sweary. Yeah. It's not intended to listen to right with your kids around. Um, and that's probably one of the reasons why I've stopped listening to it. Because I don't have much of my own time anymore. Yeah. And I think you've said it before. When you're listening to a podcast, it's usually in the car with the kids when they're all right just to sit there yep and so don't tend to listen to podcasts that have a lot of bad language in yep um there's another one um one that my wife listens to quite a lot is my first five years they were on my list yeah we well, mentioned them before you've gone two for two. Oh, there we you go first <laughs> <laughs> you tell well us my my i've mentioned this before um my wife introduced me to this so they've got an app uh it's like a parenting mm. support app um but they also do a podcast and they go through different topics such as off the top of my head, they've got discipline, sleep, uh, diet, education, all that kind of stuff. Um, I think they've done school readiness as well. So, yeah, that's a really good one. Um, they've both got a really, like, rich experience and CV in child science and child care. So they're actual like, experts. They're actual experts. Yeah. yeah, so they know what they're doing and they know what we're talking about. But it's not... How could, how do I say this? Like sometimes sciencey and experty stuff can be difficult to listen to. They're really easy to listen to. So yeah, definitely check out my first five years. Ah, oh, what's that other really famous one? Um, happy mum, happy baby. That's the one. Yep. On the tip of my tongue, the yeah. teeth, the lips. I like that one. So that's Giovanna Fletcher. Yeah. I don't know. So Brooke, being in Texas, you might have heard of the band Muck Fly. Five colors in a tune. Absolute belter. So uh, one of the singers. Uh, his wife, 
her name is Giovanna, Giovanna Fletcher, and uh, she's got a podcast called Happy Mum, Happy Baby. And it's not just for mums, so if you're a gent listening, uh, I really enjoy listening to it um, in the car. They've got some good guests on, but yeah, it's it's just a, again, it's an experience sharing thing, not so much a advice thing. So yeah, that's a that's a good listen. Um, you got any others? Uh, I don't think so. Yeah, they're the, the three that come to mind. They're the ones that stick out and like, uh, genuinely, if people listen to podcasts, parenting podcasts that are helpful and funny, like send them in. I always got time to yeah listen to some more helpful content. For sure. Oh, there's one recently that um, I've discovered called the Unplanned Podcast, Ooh. where a couple um, have Irish twins on the go. Oh, no, really? Yes, yeah, so I think they had a, a two or three month old and found out they were pregnant again. Wow. Um, and they have since started a podcast called the Unplanned Podcast. And uh, they're really funny. Amazing. They're a really funny couple. So yeah, they're they're worth a listen for sure. Well, Brooke, there you go. If you uh, want some uh, other podcast suggestions, <coughs> maybe True Crime. I got a long list. Go on, give us one. The True Crime Podcast. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> nice. Peter Crouch. Oh yeah, Brooke will love that. Yeah, that's a good, good one. A lot of Premier League content. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're listening, uh, wherever you're listening from in the world, do let us know because we love to find out where you're all listening from. And do solid impressions <laughs> <laughs> of your well-known phrases. <laughs> Moving on swiftly. So we had a comment on, uh, we posted a video about me saying that we threw a muslin cloth. It landed on my daughter's head and she fell yes. asleep. Yeah. We've had probably one of the funniest comments we've had on TikTok from this. So um, Whitney commented saying, my niece loved twirling her mum's hair so much that they gave her her a piece of a hair extension to sleep with. <laughs> is that legit? <laughs> How funny is that? So most kids will go to bed with a, a teddy, a dummy, comforter, a muslin cloth, whatever. <laughs> Whitney's niece goes to bed with a piece of fake hair. <laughs> Imagine that. I bet it's like in the morning. Oh. Just pulling out oh. little bits of plastic hair. <laughs> oh. How funny is that? I wonder, what, I wonder what it's made of. That's what I was thinking. Is it human hair? Is it horse hair? A lot of a lot of fake hair is human hair. Yeah, horse hair is another one. Is it really? What yeah. is synthetics? Synthetics, Claire's accessories. Shout yeah. out. <laughs> Shout out, Claire's. <laughs> Get your ears pierced. <laughs> Get a fake tattoo. Is that what they do? <laughs> I think, I think you can, I'm assuming you can buy fake tattoos from Claire. Claire's. Claire. Claire herself. <laughs> Walk up to the top dog. Claire's just there. Yeah. Or you, do they sell beads as well? Yeah. Beads and fake tattoos and ear pierces. Yeah. Classic Claire. Classic. You love it, Claire. <laughs> so yeah, thank you, Whitney, for that comment. That was uh, really funny. <laughs> sticking, sticking with TikTok, but changing gears very much. Okay. Um, I said it myself. I saw a video the other day on TikTok popped up, and it was a. Do you know those like motorbike head cameras? Yeah, it was one of those, and it was a child in the dash middle. Cam. Of, yeah, what? You, motorbike dash cam helmet cam helmet cam. There we go. Pretty certain that's what I started. <laughs> <laughs> full circle, full circle. Um, it was one of those, and there was a, a two-year-old in the road on their own. And so the, the motorcyclist pulls over, he's looking around, another car stops, gets the, the child out of the road. No way. Quite a young child as well. So he's saying, like, where's your, your parents? And the child's quite young, doesn't quite understand. All of a sudden, this guy comes, like, darting over, and he, he picks up, he's saying, thank you so much. It's the dad, he's really flustered. I feel so sorry for the guy. But the comments, oh, my life, the comments. Tearing him to bits. Tearing him to pieces. And he's saying... The door was open for about three seconds. He says, I opened the door, put the stuff down, closed it. Didn't realize that the child had gone. And I, is it sympathized or empathized or both? Oh, I'm I not don't very good know, words. man. But like, <clears throat> I completely felt so sorry for him because how quickly does stuff like that happen? Yeah. Even when you're at your most diligent, mm. like anything. It's, it's the fear though, isn't it? Like and it's, it, I think that can happen to a lot of people. Yeah, like, it doesn't take long for your kids just to dart off. 
like my, my, my daughter's only two, but she's quick. Yep. Um, and like sneaky quick. <laughs> <laughs> Stealthy. <laughs> Yeah, but oh, like we don't. We thankfully don't live near a main road. Mm. However, it's still like the biggest fear. Like if for some reason I can't see, I'm like, oh no, she, <laughs> she managed to open the front door. Yeah, with the keys that aren't in the door. Yeah, um, but that's that's also become a concern. Like we now take our we used to leave our keys in the front door after we locked it. Now we don't because it's just in case yeah. she can reach it. But oh man, yeah. So I felt I felt really sorry for him. So many people <laughs> saying like. Like, how irresponsible. Lots of people say, how do you know that's the dad? But I think you could tell it was the dad just from... I think I could feel his heart rate. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was it was, uh, it was was a bit of a mad a mad one. I felt really sorry for him. And uh, it reminded me, well, I, I say reminded me. I can't remember it. But my mum and dad lost me once on a beach. Really? Yeah. So I was going back and forth to the sea, as you do with your bucket and spade. Mm. And uh, I just went for a wander. And... Uh, they couldn't find me. So they had to go to the the lifeguard and he got his uh, binoculars out and, and found me. My mum was like describing my bucket and what I was wearing. And yeah, and he just, he just saw me like walking oh, up man. a completely different part of the beach. Like, that's almost giving me like heart palpitations thinking about that. Oh yeah. my word. And yeah, <clears throat> it, it can happen so quickly. I, I lost my boy at home. <laughs> oh, I, no. I panicked. I really, so we were outside. I was washing or hoovering the car or something. So we had... The back door was open, um, the garage door was open, the front door was open, like wires coming out and, and all sorts. Mm. And um, he was outside with me. I went to get, I think a sweeping brush or something, came back and he'd gone. And so I'd gone through the back door, he'd gone through the front door. I was shouting at him and he wasn't responding. Oh. And he's old enough to respond. Yeah, yeah. So I'm thinking, he's gone. So I'm like running down the other side of the street. My wife's never, <laughs> I don't think I've told her this. <laughs> Running to the other side of the street, I'm going, Luca, gone. So I go back home and I run inside, and he's just sat inside. Oh my word! I don't know why I didn't think to look inside first. <laughs> well, you don't, though, do you? You go straight to like. I panicked. Panic mode kicks in quickly. Yep. I'm getting like panicky now. Yeah, and it, it felt like it felt like a good few minutes. It was probably a few seconds. Yeah. But like, it can happen so quickly. And like I said, even when you're at your most careful. Oh man, and like parenting is one of those things that ev every single person has an opinion. Like people can be so judgmental, mm. and like even in the things that are like normal, even like even in things like nappies, there are so many different opinions of what people think is right and what's best, and yeah. there's so much judginess around it. That when we make mistakes, it's like that's so difficult. Yeah, I'm so careful trying like try my best not to be like judgmental to early parents or mistakes that people make because we all make mistakes. But it's it's highly pressurized and like if it's your kids, you're gonna beat yourself up the most. Yeah. But oh man, I can't imagine that. Like if that happened every few days, <clears throat> fair enough. Yeah, absolutely. Ask some <laughs> ask some questions. Someone needs to get involved there. Yeah. But um yeah, I, I really did like and when he said it was literally open for a few seconds. I I completely believe him and I completely believe that, that child could have just darted out because they weren't wearing shoes as well. Oh, okay. Sneaky. Yeah, sneaky. Sneaky. You don't hear them. They're like ninjas. <laughs> Fleet of foot. <laughs> so yeah, that was a that was a interesting watch and uh felt, yeah, felt, felt felt very sorry for the guy, but ultimately child was safe, back with the parents and that's the most important thing. Oh, wow. I mean, talking about feeling sorry for somebody. Um the other day, um something happened and I felt horrible. I like, felt Oh no. Yeah, and I'd like some sympathy. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> It's not that big. <laughs> so it was like it was like a Saturday. Um, we did some family stuff. I was just sorting out lunch or something. Like, something very similar. I can't remember the exact circumstances. Came in, dropped all the lunch off to my wife and my daughter. Went out just to go clean the kitchen. And my daughter went to me, you're not going to work again, are you, daddy? Oh. And like it broke my heart. Mm. I was like, is that what you think? I just, I'm constantly going to work. Yeah. And it was like... I'm, I'm at home quite a lot um, compared to a lot of parents in that I'm quite flexible in my job um, and so I know I don't I shouldn't beat myself up however it cut deep yeah and my daughter meant nothing by it she was just like oh what are you up to but it was just that kind of moment of going like I don't want my daughter to have the overwhelming sense of that I'm just never around yeah um, and that genuinely 
drives a lot of my parenting of wanting my daughter to know that she's loved and that I love her not just in like what I say but like exactly what I do and even if that doesn't she want to spend all, all day with me and she doesn't even care from there a lot of the time mm. however when she's older she might look back and I want her to know that I was there when I could and obviously we have to work we have to do all those sorts of things but it was just one of those moments that made me stop and go ah oh, that actually like, affected me a little bit yeah um and it's like you hear you hear stories, don't you? Like of people who grow up without parents, um, or parents that are like just working all the time. Sometimes it's necessary, and that's all you can do. Mm-hmm. However, it leaves like it can leave quite a mark on your kids. Yeah. Um, and it was like just a moment where I was like, Ugh. "It's nice to know she wants you around." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Conversely, yeah. Now she's telling me to go away from her at soft plays. You're not staying at home again today, are you, Daddy? <laughs> Get yourself to work. <laughs> Don't you think you should leave the house a little bit? <laughs> no, that's nice to know. Yeah. But yeah, I can imagine that was that was a little bit of a hard hitter. Yeah, I think it's just, your kids sometimes aren't that deep, but you just take it deeply, don't you? We've said this before, like a few years ago, that wouldn't have even been a thing. It's yeah. like, oh, it's Saturday today, family day. Yeah. The kids know you go to work every day. It's, it's shifted so much. Mm. I think you should get her back though, when she starts school. <laughs> You just go, oh, you're not going to school again today, are you? No, because that'll backfire, won't it? I don't want to go to school. Yeah, well, if you want me to stay here, I will. Yeah. Oh, no, get yourself to school. <laughs> I think you better go to school. Yeah. So what did? You, what was her reaction when you said, no, nah, I'm off today? Nothing spectacular. Okay. Just, it. she genuinely meant it in the way of, just, what are you up to? Mm. Yeah. And when I said I'm staying here, she was like, all right. One that got me recently was, uh, I heard my little kids playing together. And my oldest went, I can't do that right now. I'm too busy. <laughs> so, and I thought, has he got that from me? Immediately I thought that was cute. And then I went, oh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. And it was cute. It was like, yeah. yeah, I'm too busy. And then I thought, actually, he's got that from somewhere. Somewhere. And it, is it me? Does mm-hmm. Have I said to him that I'm too busy for him? And I don't think I have because I don't really use the term too busy. I just say I'll do it in a minute. Yeah. And then like a minute is an hour and a half. <laughs> but it's like there's a fine line, isn't it? Because everyone kids are like sponges yeah um and like you, if you're doing a genuinely good job you're doing a genuinely good job yeah but they'll just pick up on the phrases anyway yeah and it's just hard not to beat yourself up when something like that happens and overanalyze that's what i find anyway i go into like over analytical mode of yeah reassessing my whole life probably not that far <laughs> but just making sure that it's not like is this a good balance i think some of that's healthy i think that's always a good healthy question to ask yourself of have I got a good balance with my life at the moment and with my kids yep um, but it can be quite a downward spiral if you just if it's the last thing you think of before you go to sleep yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh bless her has she said anything like that since or is it no the last thing that she said to me that made me laugh was uh, oh my goodness yeah love that just loved it it's hilarious <laughs> Oh my word! That's one we have <laughs> quite a lot. <laughs> well, we uh, kind of separate to that. We we got a trampoline up this week. Oh, you sent me a photo. Yeah, it's like typical parenting, isn't I it? I was I was intrigued. Did you have any trouble putting it up? No, Just easy. Bit faffy. Bit faffy. The safety features were the faffy bit. Talk talk me through them. I'm not not so familiar. Like the ne- the side netting yeah, and the thing okay. that goes over the springs. Like getting the frame up and the, the springs on, they give you a nice little handy tool to do it. It was quite useful. Lovely. Did have a bit of hand cramp the next day. <laughs> a bit of doms in the hand for the, the gym rats. <laughs> but getting the safety stuff up and the, the net in, that was all the stuff that took time. So the kids were really excited that this trampoline was up. Oh, and I was like, give me a minute. <clears throat> give me a minute. <laughs> give me a, let me just finish this cigarette. And then <laughs> I was like, give me a minute. I'll get the net up and... So my wife said, I'll I'll put them in the bath. By the time you're done, you know, they can come out and play on it. I was not done. Oh, no. (laughs) The the safety stuff took took so long. But yeah, they they love it. And my little girl who, as I've mentioned before, can't really speak, but can now say, I don't want, and I want. She'll go, I want bounce, bounce. That's so cute. I'm like, you want to bounce, bounce? She's like, yeah. So that's her thing at the minute. You put her on it, you zip it down, and she says, down. (laughs) And by the time you've zipped it down, you have to zip it back up and she comes off again. So that's uh, that's quite fun at the minute. 
But yeah, it's great. That's but like, tell me someone who has a trampoline that isn't a parent. Yeah, it's a bit bit strange, isn't it? If you've got a trampoline. Like you invite oh your God. mates around for a drink. Go on the trampoline. Oh, yeah. Do you want to go on the trampoline? No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I quite like going on trampolines. Y- yeah. Have you been on it? I've not bounced on it. Ooh, I, did I just you walk. Did you walk no, on the we, trampoline? We had a little, it was a nice afternoon. So, uh, Lie down. Got the colouring books out and the crayons, and we were lay on the trampoline. Oh, did you not attempt a, a flip? I would definitely attempt a flip, and I will definitely hurt myself. Oh, please record it. <laughs> it's the kind of thing I would do. So uh, I'm gonna. You gotta do it. Get a trampoline. You gotta try and flip. I don't think there's enough space for me. <laughs> it's a small trampoline. No, it's it's six foot. Uh, yeah, that's quite tight to do a flip on. So for the kids, fair. it's brilliant. Yeah, not so much for <laughs> grown man. Ninety percent grown man. <laughs> But yeah, shout out to <laughs> shout out to my uh, sister and brother-in-law for that Christmas present. That was amazing. That was a Christmas present. Yeah, it was superb. Wow, that's a good one to get it. It's a brilliant one. But I've got a bit of a daddy issue Ooh. that I don't have anymore. We don't have a daddy is- issue jingle, do we? No. But uh, this just sums things up. And I've said this before. Like I'll write down, oh, there's a bit of a daddy issue this week for the pod. Yeah. <laughs> By the time recording comes around, it's gone away. But my uh, little girl had just a recent phase of not enjoying being in the car. Which yeah, is fair. really, and anyone listening whose kids cry or scream in the car knows it's not fun. No. There's no way you can It's really inconvenient as well. Yeah. And if you're like sole driver, there's no passenger. There's nothing you can do. Mm-hmm. You've just got to ride it out. Start singing Wind the Bobbin up. <laughs> She's going, I don't want it. I'm like, okay. Do you want hot potato? Head, shoulders, knees. And, like literally all I can offer in this situation is my voice. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> or if I can like reach around and give us like pop the shoulder out. Yeah. Pass you some... get that weird like cramp yeah, in your shoulder. Like... Yeah. But it wasn't fun, but it stopped the last couple of days. So I'm grateful for that. Just stopped. It's just stopped. No secret. No. no. Well, I don't know what it is. So my daughter has a preference of the <clears throat> car that we go in. So yeah. we've got two cars, a nice car, a rubbish car. Yep. Um, the rubbish car, you can't play music in. Yeah, yeah. And so she wants to go in the black car all the time. Except when she doesn't want to go in any car. <laughs> Dear me. And I don't know if yours are the same, but I think all kids do this. And it's the most frustrating thing I can think of right now. You're trying to put them in the car seat and they just plank. Yep. That's it. As <laughs> just straight as you all like. All the muscles just tense out. Yeah. And just the thrusting. They're so strong. <laughs> They're so strong. <laughs> And especially if you're running late, you cannot yeah. reason with them. And you have to go for the option of, oh, I just need to put you just in. Like try, to, <laughs> just try to fold them. And <laughs> use the seatbelt to crank yeah. them back in. <laughs> if I can get the straps in, <laughs> I'm, I'm all right. And just use the mechanics. <laughs> just try to fold them in half without, <laughs> like, without punching them in the stomach. <laughs> How do you do it? She's <laughs> <Just> chopping. <laughs> and like, oh, my daughter's doing this thing at the moment where she has a meltdown. There is literally nothing you can do. Even like if you bribe her with chocolate, or egg, she is, she just wants to cry. That's what she wants to do. And it's so frustrating. Yeah. And that coupled with the plank car, it's not a good day. <laughs> That's a bit of a daddy issue. So my boy, he does not have a sweet tooth. There's no bribing him with really? chocolate, sweets. That's that's pros and cons. It's great. Yeah. It's brilliant for his teeth, brilliant for his health, but... <laughs> terrible for the bribe. Terrible for the bribe, especially at dinner time. So how many parents say, you know, if you don't finish that, there's no pudding? Yeah. He couldn't care less about the pudding. So it's like, right, try and finish some food. There's no incentive. Yeah. There's nothing. You won't have chocolate cake. Not bothered. You won't have this. Not bothered. That's what, what he wants. It. Yeah. So it's it's tricky. You should flip it. If you don't eat it, you'll have to eat chocolate cake. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, you'll be force fed. <laughs> <laughs> be force fed chocolate. But then again, it's got its positives. More for me. That's true. Unless his cousin's around, and then there's just none for anybody. Because <laughs> he is the opposite. He's all about the cake. Ch- yeah. Brucey, Brucey. <laughs> how much uh, how much chocolate did your kids eat over the weekend? So he didn't eat any. Really? It, honestly. Wow. Just doesn't like it. Every now and again, he'll... he'll I'll tell you what he does like. Mint Aero bubbles. Oh, they are. He does like those. He had they a few like the Easter egg shaped ones of those. So oh, I take really? that back. But 
Myla is just a, a snack machine. <laughs> She's all about the snacks. 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 <laughs> oh, She'd fit snacks. in well with your family. Yep. She loves the snacks. And she loves steaks and milkshakes. So That's, <laughs> that's amazing. Get her in. Because <laughs> uh, just a quick shout here to uh, Nomo. Have you heard of Nomo? Nomo. It's the uh, n- non-dairy chocolate. Is it? Yeah. I've so never a heard lot of this. vegans will eat it. But my daughter, she's allergic to milk and so eggs and soy. Mo? Just no mo, as in like moo. Uh, no okay. moo. But it's N O M O. Yeah. So no mo. And they do uh, Easter eggs. Really? Yeah. And they went down well? Amazing. More than Easter eggs. Last year they didn't, I don't think they did these or I couldn't find them. They did like a full on Easter egg hunt pack. Nice. So last year my daughter was a bit too young to enjoy it anyway. But um, this year we did a little Easter egg hunt with chocolate she could actually eat. Brilliant. Rather than just, oh, you found it, now go give it to somebody else. Have you done a, like, a taste test comparison? I've tasted some of them. How is it? So this is coming from someone who loves normal chocolate. Um, If I was in a pinch, it would work. If I was in a pinch. If I was in a pinch. (laughs) And by that, I mean, if I was allergic to milk. (laughs) And by that, I mean, if I had no other option. (laughs) It's, It's better than some of the worst chocolate, put it that way. All right. And it's a be- much better alternative than what we had a few years ago. Yeah, okay. Like the last few years when I've tasted vegan chocolates and stuff. We've made strides. Yeah, it's leaps and bounds. Mm. It's good. And like the the big players obviously do their own vegan alternatives like Galaxy and all that. But yep. Nomo, staying strong. Nomo's up there. Yeah, it's good. Just genuinely, <laughs> genuinely appreciative of that good buddy. <laughs> nice. Shout out to you, Nomo. Yeah, good one. Yes, Mo. I'll take a sponsor. <laughs> I'll take a sponsor. I'll take a sponsor after saying if there was no other alternative, I'd give it a whirl. <laughs> My daughter loves it. That's all that matters. That's true. Your daughter yeah. would take a sponsor. <laughs> she would. This isn't um this isn't really a daddy issue. This is probably the opposite. I had quite a, a pleasant moment the other day. I just felt really proud of my daughter. Go on. And uh, we've got these little gruffalo puzzles. Yep. Four toddlers. Where they've got like a, a ten-piece puddle, puddle puzzle, a twelve-piece puzzle, fourteen and sixteen in that order. Love them. And uh, first of all, she got the box and she read out the numbers. She can read double digits now. It's very proud. Yep. And then, to my amazement, she tipped them out, and they weren't separated in different bags. Tricky. All the pieces there, and she sat there, put them all in different piles, and just solved all of them. Ah. Oh. And genuinely, I just sat there and I was so proud. Yeah. It's like, not only is she solving puzzles, I was like, she's a genius. <laughs> like the logic that girl has. <laughs> but I just had a like really nice moment where I was like, I actually can't believe this because two weeks ago, she was struggling just to get like the, the four piece puzzles together. Yeah. And it's like, oh, this is, it feels so good just to be like, I'm just so proud of that little person. And there's puzzles. Like, yeah. everyone could do puzzles. It's not a big deal, but it's just oh, just amazing. Absolutely We've loved it. Said this before, haven't we? Where, where we're like, you're so proud of their achievements, even though in the grand scheme of things, like yeah. it's not an achievement. Like they're not going to look back on their life and someone say, right, what are your proudest moments? And she's not going to go, when I did that puzzle, the Gruffalo one. Whoa, yeah, the snake was difficult. But watching it as a as a parent today, that is one of yeah. And it, you know, when they say their first words. At the end of their life, your child's not going to go, oh, John, chuffed with the way I said apple <laughs> when I was 18 months old or whatever. But like for you, that is a highlight. It's it's huge. And it's like in two weeks time, that won't feel the same because she'll be able to do that and it'll just be normal. Like yeah. She can just do puzzles. But we've been doing puzzles together for a while and she's always needed help. And like it's that process of she's actually learning and that is really hard to comprehend and to explain to somebody how good that feels. Mm. That she she didn't even know what puzzles were last year. She couldn't even speak. She was one. <laughs> now she can do the puzzles all by herself. And it just that there is I don't think there's an appropriate way to articulate just that moment. Yeah. Um and it just felt great. And I know it's trivial and silly, but it was just one of those are the types of highlights in parenting that are really hard to communicate to people that don't have kids. Yeah. Of you all just feel so elated at this little human being doing something that you've been able to do for 20 years. <laughs> yeah. 
and it's just undescribable. It's it's so joyful and proudful. Prideful? Yeah. I don't know, man. I don't know what the word is, but it's just, just so proud. Of, like my little girl, she's a year and a half years old, and recently I said, oh, she, someone left the door open. Don't know who it was. I was like, my, close the door because I didn't want to get up, <laughs> and she did it. And I was like. <laughs> And she did it safely. I was like, well, watch your fingers. And she moved her hand. Like, you can't speak, but you can understand. Yeah. And there was that level of, I was just so proud that you understood what I said and you did it. And then when I told you to move your hand out, like, you, I'm just so proud of her for closing a door. <laughs> but I was so proud of her. So, yeah, I, I'm I'm there with you. It might it might be trivial, but at the same time, it's, it's not. It's... And it's just those moments. And then, like, so literally this morning... <clears throat> So to give you a bit of background, I've been, I think I saw a video or something that was basically saying that when you tell your kids off, you shouldn't like use the language like that they're naughty or that they're a naughty girl or whatever that is, mm. um, because then they think, oh, I'm I'm like that all the time. You're labeling them, yeah. Yeah. I, I don't quite understand all the complexities around that. <clears throat> However, this morning she came to me and went, Daddy, am, am I a good girl? And that that thing was playing in my mind of oh, because I've definitely said that, and oh, you're being naughty now, all that sort of stuff. And I was a little bit like, oh no, have I like damaged my child's brain? I haven't, but you ask those you ask, you ask those questions of yourself, and I was like, oh, you, you're a, you're a really good girl. And she went, can I have some chocolate? Oh dear me, she lured me in. Great girl, <laughs> she's got you, <laughs> baited you. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I'd like caused emotional damage and she just wanted chocolate. And did you have the chocolate? Did you have the Nomo? I did, but we had to have a talk. Oh, was no chocolate before lunchtime. That did not go down well. That's fair. Because yesterday she had lots of chocolate before lunchtime. Easter, man. Yeah. It's all about the chocolate. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Well, that was, I enjoyed that. It feels like, I don't know why my voice went so high there. <laughs> it's like being back at church yesterday morning. <laughs> That was uh, that was really fun. I enjoyed that uh, that chat. That was very wholesome. Nice to be back in the saddle. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to get in touch with us, send us your stories, send us your questions, send us your daddy or mummy issues, please do. We're at Parents and Tools Pod on Instagram and TikTok, or if you want to send us an email, Parents and Tools Pod at gmail dot com. Before we go, here's a quick dad joke. Come on now. Then no fancy setup required for this one. I'm not laughing today. <laughs> Okay. Oh. <laughs> it's got me. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. I'll compose. <clears throat> Why do seagulls fly over the sea? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you built this up. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Why do seagulls fly over the sea? Because if they flew over the bay, they'd be bagels. <laughs> Oh man, thank you for listening. <laughs> we'll see you next week.